What if I told you that the most effective way to reduce oxidative stress is actually super simple and you probably already have all that you need for it at home. I know that a lot of people get overwhelmed by this topic because oxidative stress sounds all technical and a little scary. But once you understand what it really is, where it comes from and how to handle it, you will see that it mostly comes down to some straightforward doable habits. So in this video, we're going to break it all down. We'll cover what oxidative stress actually means for your body, the biggest things that drive it up, and then I'll give you a two-part protocol that's all about improving what goes in and what comes out. Of course, we will also talk about food and supplements without overcomplicating things. So by the end, you will see how easy it can be to lower oxidative stress and support your long-term health. To begin, let's quickly recap the basics of oxidative stress. It happens when there's an imbalance in your body. On the one side, you have free radicals, which are unstable molecules that can damage cells. And on the other, you have antioxidants, which neutralize these free radicals. Your body actually needs some free radicals because they're involved in fighting infections and even signaling your cells to grow and adapt. But when there are too many, or when your antioxidant defenses are too low, then things start to break down. That's oxidative stress. It damages cell membranes, proteins, and even your DNA. Over time, this can lead to everything from premature aging to chronic diseases like heart disease, diabetes, neurological problems, and even cancer. So yeah, it's definitely a big deal. Now, the most important drivers of oxidative stress are usually a poor diet, so too much processed food that ramps up inflammation and oxidative damage, environmental toxins, so things like pesticides, heavy metals, plastics, and air pollution. All of these load up your body with toxic compounds that drive free radical production. Then we also have chronic stress, not just physical, but also mental stress, because it leads to your adrenal glands pumping out cortisol and adrenaline, which can indirectly drive oxidative processes. Then we have infections and gut issues. So this can be bacterial imbalances or even parasites that create oxidative byproducts. Hormonal imbalances, for example, estrogen dominance, and of course, lifestyle factors like smoking, drinking too much alcohol, and not sleeping enough. So as you can see, it's usually not just one thing, but a combination of many lifestyle factors. Which brings me to the protocol to bring all of this back into balance. When it comes to actually reducing oxidative stress, it's helpful to think of it as a two-part process. First, you want to improve what goes into your body. This means better food choices, more antioxidants, and fewer pro-oxidants, so things that trigger oxidative stress. This is your input side, which will be mostly governed by your diet. On the other side, you also want to improve how well your body can get rid of the stuff that causes oxidative stress in the first place. That's your output side, which is mostly governed by your elimination organs, especially your liver. Most people try to fix everything with just the input side, but if your body isn't clearing out toxins well, you're only doing half the job. But we will get to that in a second. Before, let's talk about the input side in more detail and let's talk about foods as a foundation. Your diet is always the starting point. If you're not eating well, no amount of supplements is going to fix the root issue. You want a diet that is rich in antioxidants, vitamins, and minerals, because these are what your body needs to neutralize free radicals. The most practical tip here is to load up on cooked vegetables. Cooking breaks down the cell's walls and makes nutrients more bioavailable. And if you don't overcook, you still get a good amount of vitamin C plus a wide range of phytonutrients that have strong antioxidant effects. Think of colorful veggies like carrots, bell peppers, broccoli, kale, spinach, sweet potatoes, really anything with deep color is usually loaded with antioxidants. Eating lots of these every single day is one of the simplest, most effective things that you can do. The most essential antioxidants that you want to cover with your diet are of course one, vitamin C, this is probably the best known antioxidant out there. It helps neutralize free radicals directly and also regenerates other antioxidants in your body like vitamin E. It's crucial for your immune system, collagen production, and even helps your body process and flush out toxins. When it comes to food sources for vitamin C, again, think of bright colorful fruits and veggies. Bell peppers, again, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, citrus fruits like oranges and lemons, strawberries and kiwis. They're all packed with it. And like I said before, cooked vegetables still keep a good amount of vitamin C 
if you don't overdo it. That's why I prefer to steam my veggies. Next we have vitamin E. This is a fat soluble antioxidant that mainly protects the fats in your cell membranes from getting damaged. This is super important because once those fats oxidize, they can trigger inflammation and more free radicals. Vitamin E also helps keep your skin healthy and plays a role in hormone balance. You will find a lot of it in wheat germ oil, sunflower seeds, almonds, hazelnuts, and avocados. Another top option is red palm oil, which not only has vitamin E, but also comes with protective carotenoids. And then we have vitamin A. This is another fat soluble nutrient, but it works a bit differently. It's involved in regulating your genes, supporting your immune system, and keeping your skin and gut lining strong, all of which helps protect you from oxidative stress indirectly. The best sources of active vitamin E, called retinol, are animal foods like liver, egg yolks, butter, and cod liver oil. If you're getting it from plants as beta carotene, go for brightly colored veggies like carrots, sweet potatoes, and leafy greens. Just keep in mind that your body needs to convert beta carotene into active vitamin E, and not everyone does that super efficiently. This is especially important for vegans and vegetarians who are often low in it. Of course, besides vitamin C, E, and A, there are also other powerful antioxidants that are naturally found in everyday foods. Polyphenols that are found in berries, grapes, and green tea can help fight inflammation and protect your cells. Flavonoids in onions, apples, and dark chocolate support your blood vessels and brain. Sulfur compounds in garlic and onions boost glutathione, which is also incredibly potent. Even spices like turmeric and ginger are loaded with compounds that lower oxidative stress. The cool thing is that when you eat a wide variety of colorful fruits, veggies, herbs, and spices, then you're basically flooding your body with dozens of these protective plant compounds. Of course, there are also minerals that lower oxidative stress, such as magnesium, zinc, selenium, and again, sulfur. Magnesium helps calm inflammation and supports hundreds of enzyme systems that keep oxidative damage in check. Zinc plays a direct role in protecting your DNA and proteins from free radical damage, and selenium is needed to make glutathione peroxidase, which is an enzyme that's necessary for optimal glutathione functioning. Getting enough minerals will also make sure that your body can naturally swap out toxic metals that often take their place. This will lower oxidative stress a lot. What all of that means is that an antioxidant promoting diet will generally include lots of vegetables and some fruit for vitamin C, quality fats from oily fish or eggs for vitamin A, wheat germ oil or red palm oil for vitamin E, along with good animal proteins like grass-fed beef or pasture-raised chicken for your zinc, along with things like Brazil nuts for selenium. Optionally, you can also include some dairy if you tolerate it, which will be high in cysteine, which boosts glutathione. You will also want to add garlic, onions, and cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and kale for their sulfur and detox support. Throw in some herbs and spices like turmeric, ginger, and rosemary to really ramp up your polyphenols. Basically, it's a diet built around whole, colorful, and nutrient-dense foods, so nothing out of the ordinary. Okay, so that was the input side. Let's now look at the output side, so getting out what shouldn't be there and what's causing oxidative stress. Things that need to come out include all of the oxidative triggers that we already talked about. So again, toxic metals, excess hormones, especially estrogen, and environmental chemicals like pesticides, plastics, or solvents. All of these things can build up in your system and keep your antioxidant defenses working overtime just to stay ahead of the damage. That's why simply taking more antioxidants usually isn't enough. You have to actually move these compounds out of your system to get better. I have many videos on my channel that go over proper detoxification, and it mostly comes down to your liver and bile flow. Your liver is like the ultimate sorting and detox organ. It grabs toxins and waste products out of your blood, breaks them down into safer forms, and then packages them up so they can be eliminated more easily. Most of them get loaded into your bile, which is stored by a gallbladder that squirts it into your small intestine whenever you eat fats. From there, it ideally binds to fiber or some other toxin binder and leaves your body through your stool. What that means is that a lot of oxidative stress reduction actually comes down to keeping your liver strong and your bile flowing. If your liver is sluggish from nutrient deficiencies, for example, or too many toxins, then it can process waste efficiently. 
And if your bile is thick or stagnant, which is very common, toxins that were supposed to leave your body can get reabsorbed right back into your bloodstream. That creates a nasty cycle where your liver has to deal with the same junk all over again, which will ramp up oxidative stress even more. This is why focusing on these two things is so important, because when these systems are working well, then your body can finally offload toxins instead of just endlessly fighting them with more antioxidants. Great. I also want to take a look at supplements for antioxidant support. So here's an overview of the nutrients that we talked about earlier, if you want to supplement them. For vitamin C, we have a dose of around 200 to 1000 milligrams per day for long term use. Short term, you can definitely go higher if you need to. Vitamin A, I would say a maximum of 5000 IU daily, and this helps the liver and gut lining. For vitamin E, about 100 to 400 IU, which helps keep your bile thin and flowing. And for magnesium, I would say 200 to 500 milligrams per day. This helps relax tissues and will ease bile flow. In terms of zinc, you want to go with a dosage of around 10 to 30 milligrams per day, and it helps stabilize cell membranes against oxidative damage. Selenium should be taken from 100 to 200 microgram per day. And like I said before, it supports glutathione peroxidase and also helps bind to toxic metals. Optional supplements would include things like N-acetylcysteine or whey protein for even more glutathione boosting effects, MSM for additional sulfur, or antioxidative phytonutrients that are very hard to get through a normal diet, for example, astaxanthin. Now, depending on what you might be used to, these doses can seem a bit low. Maybe you've even seen protocols online that push way higher than that. But what's important to remember is that we don't want to completely crush oxidative stress with too many supplements. You see, your mitochondria actually need small amounts of oxidative stress as a signal to adapt and get stronger. It's basically like a workout for them. When they experience a tiny bit of stress, they ramp up their own antioxidant defenses, become more efficient and build resilience. If you totally squash that signal by dumping huge amounts of antioxidative supplements into your system every day, you block this healthy adaption. This concept is called mitohormesis, and it's why a little oxidative stress isn't just okay, it's actually necessary. So the real goal isn't to get oxidative stress down to zero. That would backfire. What you want is to keep it at a balanced level. So low enough that it's not causing damage, but still present enough to encourage your cells to adapt, repair and stay strong. This is how you build lasting resilience and not just short term relief. The other key takeaway here is to understand that reducing oxidative stress comes down to two things. So cleaning up what goes in, so more antioxidant rich foods, fewer processed foods and fewer toxins, and also making sure that your body can get this stuff out that's not supposed to be there. So supporting your liver and bile flow. Also keep in mind that you don't need to be perfect. You just want to be consistent. A few small improvements in your daily habits will add up big time over the next months and years. I know that especially optimizing liver function and understanding toxin elimination can be overwhelming for beginners. If you want a system that covers all of that in more detail, I've put together a detox masterclass that guides you through the whole process step by step. It covers the exact foods, supplements and lifestyle tweaks that you need to support your liver and lower oxidative stress from all kinds of toxins. This will help with recovery from things such as chronic fatigue, burnout or hormonal imbalances and make sure you avoid the most common mistakes that can set beginners back years. You can find everything in the description under my programs.